Sick, dude. It's like a flat bill. Sick flat bill, dude. Looking old. Uh, back again. We covered the roof scoop on our last Fab Diaries installment. This one we're gonna do the windshield. The same car, same truggy, uh, but just doing the windshield. It's an extensive process. Uh, it's the second one I've done, so it's still like a learning curve for myself as well. Um, using factory glass has a lot of its own challenges just because of, there's complex radiuses going on. It's not just like an arch, but there's also a vertical and it's just the way you have to shape the aluminum to get it to holster the glass right is just, uh, you know, it's a challenge and challenges are great. So um, we're gonna start this process, um, start just kind of laying things out from scratch and go from there. What I got going right now, I want to, I'm gonna make this top piece. I'm gonna have it go in here. It's gonna go in 14 inches from here. I actually built this angle so you could still get a Zeus button tool in here. Um, that was the whole reason for this kick. Instead of it being like forward or anything, I just want to be able to actually get a Zeus button in here. So the fastener is to hold this panel. We're already kind of a premeditated thing. So I want to go in here uh, 14 inches back, which is gonna hide all the crap like that, but it's also gonna protect from like dust, debris, glare from the sun, you know, and it'll go, it'll direct air to the coolers with still blocking the occupant um, situation here, you know. So uh, I got this piece cut. I'm going to start roughing it in, loosen this up. Once this comes off again, I'll trim this because this is really bothering me just that it's lifted here. It's bugging me. Uh, we need to do Zeus buttons all over again, figure out our layout and go from there. Is here. The glass is here. Mike's got the glass on deck here. I'm gonna set this up here like a little candid because he's a little, you know, we don't want to be too, too invasive with the old camera. Alright. Pretty stoked to see how this stuff fits. actually gonna be a perfect fit the one thing I noticed one thing I noticed in my sketch here um, this thing kind of dips down I don't think it's gonna do much of that it's only gonna go a little bit and then it's gonna arch out so um, just gonna start putting it together it's gonna be more accurately represented like that so we're still gonna get a great end result it's just I don't think it goes down as low but I'm gonna start sinking it. The windshield continues. Right now I wanna, I, I sanded down the old light bar mounts. Right now I want to get all of our, hold on, I'm trying to get them zooming on this thing. I wanna get all of our Zeus buttons prepared. So it's gonna be a one, two, three, four per side. And then I'm thinking five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, um, So, I'm gonna get those all set up so they're turnkey. And then what we're gonna wanna work on is getting the glass square to the chassis, probably start a center line 
right across, do a center line on the glass, top and bottom, uh, get this thing where we want, and then start building the side plates. The side plates are pretty parallel with the glass, so it's gonna make life a little easy, and we obviously wanna kinda build them on tangent and, and coming out. We don't wanna have that thing dip down or do weird shit like that, so if we can just have it kinda being a natural tangent to the arch of the windshield, uh, that's what we're gonna go for. Things pretty much squared to where we want it in here. It's pretty good parallels. You can kind of see it. It's hitting just about right for a side. So the cuts, the cuts are really good. The radius and the fit is good. The height is good. Pretty happy with this whole thing. The last time I did one of these, I, I used it for building the frame and I broke it. Uh, it sucked. We do have templates for them, but no matter what, it just sucks to break stuff like that. So I'm gonna do the best I can to, to not break this one. The good thing about this windshield is I had a really big radius on the last one, and so I built like this shrunk, um, stretch, trying to find focus, this, this shrunk, stretched frame. Um, and it was just, it was a lot harder to get everything going. And it had a, it also had like a vertical bow to it, where this is almost perfectly straight on the sides and it's tangent so what that is going to let me do is i can build the side plate and i can put the the frame in it which will the frame will kind of if this is your glass and that's you know this is the the end over here the frame is going to be just like a, your normal car would have that's kind of a a return i don't even think it needs this bottom one at least just this portion here, you know, and then this will go to the car. So we need to have a tray and then we go and glue all that shit in, um, just like a normal windshield for a car. Uh, and it's just, it's solid, it doesn't move and it's fully sealed. So that's what I'm gonna build first. Just get all this, I'm gonna locate the Zeus buttons. Um, you know, one, two, three, four, just like the drawing per side. And then get those frames made get those in there and then I can start constructing the top and the bottom parts while those are like almost acting as placeholders for the windshield and kind of a fixture to hold it where it needs to be. I don't know about it all. I'm gonna have this thing wrap a little bit just to roll the edges to keep it consistent with the rest of the chassis. Um, um, I like the height too. I'm just kind of thinking Zeus button style. Definitely one up top so you're clear. Two, just want to make sure that wherever we land these other two um, there's four it is a lot for this but that's it's this is kind of a structure that needs to be fastened appropriately so we're gonna lay four on each side definitely top and bottom are easy and then I'm just gonna center to there and I think I have enough room I kind of already pre-ran with a with a plate up here to make sure it's good want to make sure I have enough meat when I cut these strips to not only get over to the glass but then to actually break down and then and then have a vertical wall and then capture back over where it's gonna saddle this thing so I think to keep it simple, we just add another like maybe three quarter down. So we do three, four and a half, four and a half, four and a half by, hmm, I don't know how we want to play that over there. We're just making a frame for this thing. Let's do four and a half by 28.
again, one of the important things that I like to do with these Zeus tabs. Um, I also, as long as I know that there's gonna be a finalized, this is like the final layout for the, for the tabs, I always weld them because when I do like, I put the little centering pin in there and you know, I'll slap the sheet metal to locate on the backside, like what my center point for drilling holes or making holes in the panel. So tacks are only good so far and I'll just go ahead and like send, if I know I'm gonna be taking this thing on and off and this and that, I just, I just get everything welded right off the bat. Um, if it's a bunch of them, I'll just weld the whole thing out. I'll take the time, just get it done. As long as you are, uh, you know, sure that your layout's right and you're not gonna get into a bind and say, oh shit, I, I shouldn't have welded that. And then, you know, the tabs should be treated just like anything else that you're building. Just put the same kind of pride and craftsmanship into, into the welding and preparation for the tabs. It all is part of the puzzle. It's all part of the big picture. I get better results uh, not pulsing the TIG when I'm welding uh, the, Zeus, the spring plates on. Kind of hold this a steady arc and just walk the puddle. You know, I always put that tack at the end of that thing so I'm not burning the edge away. And then I'll I'll burn into the tack. I got eight out of the, I believe, 11 juice buttons on. Uh, I want to work these side pieces before I do anything, so I have no intention on locating the other Zeus locations until we get these sides solidified. There's also a lot of shape going on here that's going to change or be subject to a design change. So I'm going to just uh, give this welder back to call on over here and carry on with my side plates. Both side strips are on with their returns in there. What I also have in there is I have a spacer. So a uh, three eighths spacer in between the glass and this, this shelf that simulates the adhesive that's gonna go in there or the glue that's gonna hold the windshield down. It's on both sides. Uh, Mike also prefers that I have like a, a gap uh, around the perimeter too. So this is about 3 16 to a quarter inch all the way around. Fairly consistent. Next piece of this puzzle, these are pretty good stoppers down here. So now I've kind of solidified this thing as far as the mounting. I've, I've got the sides and I've got the stops to the bottom in a spot where they're not going to move. So just seems natural to do this portion. This is going to involve a little more uh, aluminum work than uh, average. So. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna just get a measurement here, a width, uh, and I'm gonna break our shape into it as far as like, you know, the shelf and then the wall and then the mounting surface. I'm gonna leave the mounting surface pretty long and I'm gonna just sit in here and figure out what needs to be shrunk or stretched to get that bow correct. Once that's in there, then we can build out to it with the strip that we already have. Uh, 
either roll it or just join it and then weld it and blend it and that's like done but it is going to take some time to get the shape right and to get it to fit the other thing is last windshield i had i built like this big frame i clamped it to this <coughs> cracked so i'm going to take my time to just make sure like instead of it clamping i'm going to fit it nicely where it just wants to live there I can't wait to see this thing done. It's gonna absolutely change the look of the car. Gotta throw some paint on this thing for sure. Side strips on, like we talked about. I've been working this strip for some time. Uh, you can see here, I, I've been trying to keep a consistent gap um, on the sides and I've also started on the top. So what's going on with this shape is the, you know, the windshield has two different radiuses, X and Y. It's got one that's kind of bowing out and there's also one kind of going down. So this piece, I have standoffs built in here with Clecos. So this, this set of Clecos on the horizontal face is just holding the glass and the frame level with each other or, or you know, parallel. Um, let's say on the same plane, that works a little better. The other guys in here are a spacer so that's giving me the exact space I want and this thing does come off but what it's doing I'm just buttoning up the last of this um, after that I'm going to cut it I'm going to tack it here I believe uh, maybe maybe not maybe I'll wait on that a little bit get the other portions solidified before I fix everything because once this turns into an actual frame and it's like three-sided it's going to be tremendous getting it on and off nicely and you know that so it might be better to just like fit it really nice and do like a clico uh hitter like a double clico double clico just to hold that thing while i work everything else and so it's like modular and then once everything's done up here we'll we'll put the whole thing together i have i still have like this piece to make that's going to cover over this but this is going to be like my initial frame um, and then I have to make a return on the bottom. I couldn't get it with the one, two, three. I had to just do one, two, just because of the shrinking and the stretching involved to get the shape. So we're pretty close on this. These edges obviously are big. It looks kind of funky, especially on the other side. It's got a lot of wall to it. So I have like a tape line with uh, indicator arrows just to show like myself and make myself more comfortable with how long this or wide this thing is just to know that it's going to end there so it's like going to keep things tidy um it's coming out pretty good yeah i just this is definitely the hardest piece the, the bottom is going to be similar but at least i kind of have a good direction as to what i need to do at the bottom so i'm going to finish the corner over there it's just a little it's not fitting perfect over there uh, this is all very consistent now quite the contraption here uh, this thing is going to be the retainer frame for the upper portion of the windshield kind of slips in there the top plates here retain the same plane <clears throat> and then there's uh, you know these little spacers here which retain the gap that I want that's consistent for the sides as well as the top. And that's gonna be specifically for an install, just like a regular automotive windshield um, where that glue does take up some real estate. So that's what we have. This thing is um, formed not only on, uh, you know, it's an X and a Y radius. So it kind of dips down. Um, it's more than that, it's X, Y, Z. It goes up and it goes out. So it's a, it's kind of like a kicked, a kicked arch. It's exactly where I want it. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna build a front face. This is gonna go on the back of the top, this top panel. So I'll kind of recess this in a little bit. We have the general shape and then I'll lay, I'll lay a whole trim piece on it and I'll weld it right on the radius there. So when we sand it and blend it, it, it blends right in. We will definitely be running this thing wider. This will probably go away and I will actually just weld a seam in here. Um, you know, I might even do it something weird like this so it doesn't want to lend to visually uh, having a seam there. I'll maybe cut it down or something, add a whole piece. So next I'm gonna make a template and, and go in on that front part. 
got this thing is spaced out where when I add that top panel it's going to be uh, below this so I can cut this portion off but I have all of our retainer here uh, tacked enough to where I can start getting Clicos attached to the top trim piece that's going to go on and that's our next step so this is actually going to become part of the next like the, the front plane uh, trim piece So what I'm getting ready is I just, I had to get these guys established on each side so I could delete all the Clicos that I have right now that are doing the retainer for, for the plane and the spacing here. And I can kind of fine tune that when I add the next piece, but I can't work with the Clicos obstructing the next step. So I'm just deleting them. Then I'll be able to get my trim piece on here. I already took the template and then ding, 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 Clico all that thing. Um, get it right we want to finish the edge right to where it lines up with that in a way where you know let's see here you know, I can, if we already have that retainer um, you know this is what we have right now this is our glass so I want to retain that gap and then I'm gonna lay this piece on top here and I want to do it right to where when I add weld I can blend it and it's all going to be the same radius. Hi Colin. A guy named Mike Cram. We used to work with a guy named Mike Cram, and he uh, he always had these A3 drill bits on his toolbox, and he'd use Clecos, and I'd always like talk shit like this. Fuck, why the fuck is he using Clecos? It's so slow, and this and that, and just do it, and this and blah 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 blah, and he. I remember like, you know, asking, I was like, what's up with the eighth inch drill bits? And he's like, oh, you know how it is. You know, it's eighth inch drill bits. It's just, you always just, you know, you're always using eighth inch drill bit. And I wasn't using an eighth inch drill bit and I didn't understand. And uh, the more I've been doing stuff like this and the more I realize how useful Clecos are and I have eighth inch Clecos and they require an eighth inch drill bit. And it's just, uh, it's funny to see. I was ignorant to it for a long time and the accuracy and just the ease of working you can create with Clicos uh, as a temporary fastener is just so optimal. So these are all Clico holes that are going to go on to the, that are going to grab that top frame as a placeholder for tacking. And I can also lay out and trim. I don't have to, I don't have to tack this piece on yet. I can lay it over and then I can actually find my top surface too, uh, trim that before it's all one frame. The goal is to kind of get this thing as finalized as possible in modular pieces where they come apart before I tack and make like an actual four-sided frame where it's gonna be super cumbersome and if the more you move that around the more it might not stay square. I'm gonna steal Colin's air. Get the burr off the backside, I don't care. There's no finish work that needs to be on this, so I'm just making quick work of getting the burr off. I'm setting up to get this thing on the car. Going, click going. I already got one drilled. 
I want to get a placeholder in here and then I'm going to jump to the other side, make sure I can get something solidified over there. Maybe even set the middle up right now. Make sure we're on the right page. I don't want to just drill directly in. This, this frame is temperamental. I'm going to make some standoffs also that hold the profile. Just going to use the old stuff that I had because I can already, oh yeah, the glass is not, not that strong. So kind of want to make sure that you don't lose your surfacing here. Yeah, I want to see what the other side does before I do anything crazy. Anything crazy, huh? And that's exactly what makes me go this stuff. You can make adjustments. Yeah, the bow in the middle, it definitely needs a little bit of love. So I'm gonna do both sides properly where I want. And then I am going to re-trim. This definitely needs a re-trim. I'm gonna watch my drill very carefully. Uh, if the, the, you know, this glass is temper, temperamental, so if I shoot, shoot too deep into there, it'll pop the glass and then chop, cut, and rebuild. And that's what we're gonna have to watch for is just making sure we're still at the right profile on this thing. I mean, ideally you wanna start in the middle and chase it out so there's no gaps. But I'm kinda of verifying that there isn't on each one of these runs. It all adds up. You do every step of the way the best you can and you think about the next steps and then that's gonna just solidify an optimal result, just undoubtedly. So uh, I'm, I'm super excited to see the top of the thing done. Still the, the roof opening here needs a standoff. It's bothering me because I just, I, it's not going to take much for that thing just to naturally want to sag. Even a couple like, yeah, 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 that thing, that's going to go. Top piece, we trimmed, tacked, welded couple areas that I was not happy with that I'm kind of have to work out and I think that's just par for the course with, with doing a shape like that and kind of floating that gap. All the Clico holes are also welded. Obviously there's like finish work that needs to be done in here. This one's missing an edge. I was aware of that. Um, the last piece that we need to do for this is make that secondary shelf there that return to hold the glass which will be the same depth here 9 16 um, so I'll have another strip go in here uh, to solidify that like top frame. Then we have to almost do the whole thing over again on the bottom. Um, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to finish, I'm going to weld the backside of this thing. Then I'm going to finish out getting all the surface shit out of this thing. Um, just all kinds of, of surface changes I don't like. I want to make it right before I add another flange onto it. Uh, once this thing is right, then I will put the flange on. Uh, get it roughly in there. I don't know if I'm even going to weld it all the way. I really want to just chunk out the bottom and, and move forward so the thing is complete. But it's trimmed on the outsides. Added some extra material on here just to get this going. Just uh, really want to get the surface right and then I'm going to move on and construct more stuff. So you can see here, 
This is our, our roof area where it comes down. Driver side A pillar, passenger side A pillar. Uh, this was tacked, there was a seam in here. And then there's also that that flange going through here. I had them tacked and I took the thing off and welded it and it, it took the crown out of this thing. So you can see here, there's a, a very specific radius that this thing has to fit the windshield. When I put it back on the car, it had a rise, maybe an inch higher in the middle where this portion had pulled down. Uh, really bummed me out. Um, I realized I probably should have had some kind of a fixture to hold that while I was welding it. You know, aluminum just loves to move around. So all the welding just made that the middle of this just So it uh, needed some manipulation. The like last night I thought about it, I was like, dude, I'm gonna have to cut this whole thing out. Uh, I didn't have to cut it out. I just uh, started looking at it and I, I banged it. Whoa, fuck. I whacked it, well, I manipulated it with a hammer as much as I could and then I put it through the planishing hammer, put it back on the car and it actually totally was saleable and I got it right to where it needs to be so I'm back on track. Uh, I, I needed to weld, put a little more weld on the uh, seam here. I did that with the car, with the with the piece in the car, with uh, like some supports to hold its structure and its shape profile. I also have relief cuts in this. That's not gonna matter too much when we put the shelf like this in here. I'll just weld just a small area wherever they're exposed and then sand the rest. So my next step is just to sand all the edge here and get this as a consistent edge just very similar to how this break is. Then I'm gonna file our radius here or our, you know, our surface change. Uh, I, I have some indicators on here, these arrows that this portion needs to come out. So I'm gonna put a little more planishing hammer into just that portion. It does have like a slight dip down. Uh, and then I'm just gonna DA finish this upper portion, get it back in the car and uh, take our next step. All this, all this top portion is done. Kind of drops off, and then you got all your seagull shit on the backside. And that's what I do. I never round the radius with the sander. I always just grab this edge, and then if we have the uh, opposing edge, I'll grab that like that, make it kind of pointy, and then I'll file sand and get a proper consistent radius all the way through. Uh, the dicom is a marking layout ink that I use to figure out surfacing. You can use it for layout and like scribing and uh, you know, doing kind of technical parts with to get your whole location and stuff dialed, but it's also really good just to figure out your surfacing, kind of see where things uh, are and where they need to be. So I kind of use this throughout the process just to see how uh, fucked up stuff is or how good stuff is and, and kind of finalize it. And when I get filing on this thing, it'll really, start to come through you know once I can get that thing all consistent then it will be telling the truth with this thing better 
got a really good shape out of it. So I'm gonna file this thing, kind of do a, a finish point on the top surface here. Get out of the zoom. Obviously got a little chingaderas here I need to work on. And this crazy guy probably needs some shrinking. It's got a heavy rise here, so I'm gonna rap, 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 shrink that. And fluff and buff, put this thing back on. Get ready for the bottom. With the dicum, I wanted to show you. This is a just the fluid bottle of it. You could probably use uh, maybe even a spray paint, but this stuff, just the way it comes off, it doesn't seem to really. I've even welded like when I when I did the fill welds on the corners. I actually just didn't even clean the dicum and welded right over it. And it, for even aluminum, that which is so picky when you're welding, it was still okay. So there's there's a lot of benefits with using dicum. It stays on, comes off easy. It's not like your traditional paint. Um, the other thing you can get too, I have a couple cans in the back, uh, is aerosol stuff. So if you just wanted to spray it, um, it's just this takes up so much real estate that I can cover a lot more ground with a uh, like just wiping it with a rag versus spraying the whole thing I, I use that on select parts instead uh, but you know you can order that stuff by the gallon or pints or whatever and this is really going to give me like a bearing see even if you start following the lights that are up on the ceiling you can kind of see like where our shapes and I know when I feel it that, that we have stuff like right here so even if I follow this thing see something well actually it all looks pretty good There's a couple areas I can actually feel. So I'm gonna wanna probably get those back in the planishing hammer. I think I can maybe hit these out easily. But there's like one up here I wanna figure out. So I'm gonna, I think I'm just gonna run um, some light sandpaper through here on a block to see what the real story is and address it likewise. So just, you can see bigger, surface uh, inconsistencies, if you will. A lot of these small guys I can file out like no problem. I, I make those go away all day. Some of the bigger stuff, that's what I like to look at to run through again. Uh, it's definitely not that bad, but you know, you can see like you take a walk to this thing, it, it'll tell a story. And if your edge is like perfectly consistent, you know, then you, you won't get a lot of the patchiness like this. So uh, it's just part of the process of getting it really good and it's easy to just fluff this thing with a DA sander and not see this stuff but once you know assume that it's going to be gloss black you know and once when it's gloss black it just everything and I, I'd rather build it the best I can where it doesn't have any of that stuff if that's ever the case of, of you know paint or your reflections or anything uh, I'd rather just get it done now than think about anything like Bondo, especially the powder coat. You don't Bondo that shit, so just gonna get it right. Aprons are back. Thank God. I've been feeling, you get used to wearing these things every day and you just feel almost naked without them and it smokes your shirts and things get caught on them and then I'm like, especially when I'm working on cars or I'm on and off the thing, I'm constantly kind of like having to put my Zeus buttons or tools somewhere and I don't have these pockets right here that I like to, you know, I can put a very a variable amount of things in here. Uh, but let's get back to this, so. Okay, uh, trimmed the sides, obviously left some notes here. This thing's got kind of a nasty rise in it. Uh, it's not anything crazy. I just need to massage the metal, but you can see the seams are pretty good now. I have all this rolled. This is like my last file sand on here. Really kind of start telling the truth. Um, this thing's kicked my butt quite a bit. I don't know exactly. I mean, the only thing I'm thinking is maybe that I didn't have like proper fixturing on this the first time and it just, just wasn't happy and it moved a lot. And trying to get the surfaces back to straight is still like an ongoing process that I'm learning. Um, and it's not easy. Aluminum moves a lot. And, especially when you're putting shape into it. It's just, it's like a constant battle of shrinking and stretching and, and doing that in an order that makes the surface do what you want it to. So 
we are really good with what we have here. I put two more Zeus plates under here. Where are you hiding at? Uh, I think there's one right there, if you can see it. Uh, I got the centering pins in, so I'm gonna you get those things. Just, I, I noticed this, so I want more Zeus buttons. They're just evenly spaced from these outer ones. Uh, my next thing I'm gonna figure out, I'm gonna put the glass on, and obviously I've been using this as like my guide with a stopper, so this needs to come out so I can build the bottom part, so now what I need to figure out is get the glass in here. You're good. And then uh, just get that, get some kind of a stopper here. Glass is secure. Uh, I spent a good portion of the day yesterday building a standoff for in here that's integrated with mesh. So that mesh is actually is the standoff. Super secure. You can see there's more Zeus buttons up here kind of holding that thing. The glass is in. This is just like a secondary, uh, like a holder just so it doesn't slip down when I'm working on the lower portion. And I have these standoffs here that are just like, uh, you know, just sheet metal with a break in it that's clecoed to the back side back here. So I'm gonna work on building that return. That kind of seems like the, the big time vampire with this thing, uh, just getting that shape in there, shrinking, stretching. So I'm gonna get that done first, and then I'm gonna build, build it out very similar to the top, kind of avoid what I feel took a lot longer than I wanted with the top and, and see if I can make some of these steps a little more efficient. It's chaos in here. So, uh, truggy windshield. Just documenting most of that stuff got to like the lower portion and kind of just just committed to finishing the thing i think part of the part of the situation with filming the fab diaries episodes is just actually committing to like document the whole process so what i wanted to do whoa dude you look like ernest goes to camp uh what i wanted to do is kind of cover what I finished on the thing and go look at it and go over this this bottom portion oh, What's up, dude? Just say hi. There you go <laughs> um, But it's not in here. We finished it. Just want to like the glass is temporary glued in there I'm not gonna fully glue it in until we get everything powder coated um, So yeah, let's check it out Dun 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 Got a quick job on Sean's car, so had her sitting outside for uh, for the week. Sean's truck's almost done. Update on that soon. All right, let's go check her out. So she's out here, Sean's truck's inside. We're just kind of wrapping some stuff out. Um, this is what we got, is our end result. Mike obviously came by, um, just did a quick stitch of glue on the glass to get it in there this thing came out great I mean the only issues I had was you know it's, it's such a big frame that 
getting all the welding and shaping on it and then if you're doing that off the car and then you're putting it back on it really um, lends itself to just having challenges because it wants to move around and uh, just get weird on you the portion i didn't get to and cover is this lower portion so you know there was obviously this this piece is one um, that had kind of a seam here and then this is all one big piece uh, mated with another piece on the inside there so there's a great amount of rigidity here this is all 90 thickness um, you got pickups in here and then you have a pickup on the outside then you have two more here so this thing all together it's like it does not move uh, and I wanted to bring the shape down towards this valley so there's not the void you know if you didn't have that here you'd kind of see just the openings there um, all in all the the thing was great I think I had more challenges on the um, the actual roof scoop than anything else but came out great so the next step with this thing is finishing up that center dash pod that we talked about um, the rear b pillar mesh panel and then getting this thing stripped down figuring out a color i think the chassis will probably do like a, a gloss um, or a semi-gloss black to it suspension components i don't know yet i'd love to hear you guys comments on kind of the combos uh, there was a root beer metallic brown idea thrown around for the body panels which i really am in love with and then uh, you know maybe just doing like a metallic silver because this the, the silver does something here with this that's really special that is uh, very pleasable to the eyes. So um, again, thank you guys for kind of the support with this stuff and, and following the journey. Um, we're just gonna keep doing Fab Diary stuff uh, uh, along with the other stuff that we do on the channel on Mondays. But you know, when there's special ones that come about where I can manage the time properly and make them efficient for the client and for uh, the production of these, then we'll do them. Um, we're, we have kind of a slew of smaller ones that are gonna be released as far as the you know tutorials and essentials episodes. Uh, before we get back into the big stuff. So thank you. Like, subscribe, share the channel. Have a good day.